So let's take a look at the Fuso grid for you with the two factory cars of Lowndes and Winterbottom, one and two. As I said, first and second in the championship. McLaughlin, great job yesterday. First win for Volvo for 28 years alongside Mostert. Courtney, good job. Wink Cup got caught in qualifying. Should have been up further. Fabian Coulthard, good job. Robert Dahlgren, best qualifying performance of the year for him. Two Volvos in the top ten. Jason Bright, David Reynolds, nine and ten. Lee Holdsworth and Will Davison, teammates on row six. David Wall, new car for him this weekend. Russell Ingalls been qualifying very well. His race performances have not been as good. Percat, Rick Kelly, 15 and 16. Garth Tander, local WA boy, further down than he would like. Todd Kelly, man of the match yesterday. Great drive in both 14 and 15 races. Dale Wood there got caught up, got a two-spot penalty because of that infringement with Wink Cup in qualifying. And the two guys that aren't going as well as they would like in qualifying, Caruso and Moffat. Jack Perkins has got a fresh additional set of tyres. He's kept for the weekend. He will go with a four set and additional stop strategy. Scott Pye on board now with the Wilson Security Racer. On the topic of Jack Perkins, congratulations, Jacko. 100 V8 supercar race start today. So uh, 50 rounds for him coming into the weekend. It's his 100th start today, running through some of the cameras. Now, I've cross-entered another entry on my side of the ledger this weekend, Scafie, because yes. of the problem with my voice. So I've got Aaron Noonan in my team here to help me through this race as well. However, you're going to have to do the whole thing on your own. You're not going to get any assistance. Oh, oh, I've, I've got, got Greg Murphy on standby still, so I've, that's OK. I've got a stunt double. So uh, this is David Reynolds, Botlow Racing Fort Performance Racing Falcon. Let's get back downstairs with Larko. Quite intense out there on the track, but very intense down here. Jeremy Moore just talking Craig Lowndes up to the line. And our other championship contender, Mark Winterbond, has got Chris O'Toole's just talked him up. What's critical here, remember, Craig's on pole, but he's on the dirty side of the track. So Mark Winterbottom, by default, has an advantage being on the outside, on the racing line. Let's see the race to turn one, because sometimes it works for you staying on the left-hand side of the track. It's just 270 metres from that starting grid front row position to the first corner. It's very short and it's always drama packed. It certainly is. The grip level is very low. Green flag. Guys are ready. Red light. Great jump. Both cars very equal jump. Loud's got away very nicely. Mostert got across to the inside. Very, very equal start, and well done. Mostert cleared the brake, allowed Winterbottom in. That was nice in terms of the factory cars for Ford. On board with Dave Reynolds. Pretty lively, almost into the back of Winkup. And Winkup and Courtney got tangled across the top of the rise at turn three and four. Reynolds actually went back to gear then to just be prepared through the left-hander at turn four. Remember that Wing Cup's got a quick car. We didn't see it in full evidence in qualifying because of the balking, which, by the way, cost Dale Wood those couple of spots. That was close. Wing Cup almost got turned around to the left-hand side. Easy to go on the fence on the left-hand side there. Tander and Rick Kelly, they've had a bit of history this year. Ingle has a little look at Bright. Down the inside, Tander on Rick. It's going to leave him some room. They run around the outside of that kerb. It'll be interesting to see who can get to the inside now as Fabian dives down the inside of Robert Dahlgren. Good move, Fabian Coulthard. And that will put Fabian into eighth position. So Lowndes, Winterbottom, Moston, McLaughlin, Courtney, Winkup, Reynolds, Coulthard, Dahlgren, Holdsworth. That's your top ten. Second and the fifth so far this weekend for Coulthard. <laughs> An outstanding job of just accumulating points this year. Interesting, before this weekend, he'd never had a podium at this location, so it was a big breakthrough day for him yesterday, and that car was very strong. Here's the margin. And Wink Cup's taken some ground out of Craig Lowndes on that lap there, Neil. He's just snuck up onto the back of the Red Bull Racing Australia Commodore. There's not much in it. Guys are pretty contained at the start of this. They know it's a very long race. Tire conservation is an imperative today. Minimise the wheel spin. Reduce the amount of slide. 
drive the car straight off the corner. Ensure that you don't use the tyre too hard too early. Here's the replay of the start. As Mark called it, very close between the front row. Lowndes with the edge when they got down to turn one, just by virtue of track position by the time he got down there, Mostert. Nice job. Dirty side of the road. Here's the replay from on board with David Reynolds. Splits the pack. And he was the big winner, Neil. He actually got three positions on the opening lap. And you see there, this is the wing cut one now. Just, we'll just stay with you for a second. Look, there's a little bump there with Courtney. And then this little bit of contact off the kerb. And that little bump there normally would fire him straight to the left in the fence over the rise. So he did a great job to save it. And so did Dave Reynolds did a great job to not have as much throttle as he should have had. He come out of the throttle, eased off, and made sure that Wind Cup could regain control. That was great driving. Wind Cup was searching for fresh air there on the last lap as well. They're all hovering in the low 57s at the moment. Telemetry up. Gives you an idea of the pace we're riding here with James Courtney. Position number five. That's the back of Scott McLaughlin's car. He's got Wind Cup behind him and Jamie was searching for air on the pit straight in the previous lap. Winterbottom, meantime, has gone very quick in the first timing intermediate. The first sector takes you to just over the crest of the hill at turn five. Second timing intermediate's just here. 0.4 of a second is the gap. Lounge to Winterbottom. And keep an eye on the red brake light box there on your Shannon's telemetry. Because as this happens, it's okay as the tyre quality is good. You tend to still trail the brake a long way into the corner. At turn one there, a long way in, probably one of the furthest trail brake locations in Australia. And also up here. So as you come over the rise, up the throttle, and then brake it all the way in, use the hill. So you use the, the elevation change to keep the car turning. Then across the little change of direction, nice on the throttle. But watch how long this box lights up for. Down the bottom of the hill at the at Cole. That was rubber, by the way. And there's plenty of it flying around yes. out there that obscured the camera. Cresting the hill, 255 kilometres an hour in the braking area of turn seven. It's a little bit uphill into this area here, although the camera tends not to show it. In the car, you certainly feel it. Now, Prof, I'm going to give you the, the fastest six laps of the top six cars. 57, 26, 24, 25, 27, 29, 21. They're all within seven hundredths of a second for the fastest lap of the top six cars. There is nothing in it. That's why that bunch at the front are still within two seconds of each other. Pretty lively battle up the back here. Oh, Dale Wood around the outside with Jack Perkins. Dale across the grass is definitely going to be contact. He's got to go the other way. So Perkins hangs on around the outside. Then the crisscross back the other way. Dale will be looking to get down the inside now of Jack, down at Kolb. Just gets the nose in there, Jack turns it in. Another little rub. It's pretty wild stuff, these two guys. They're actually running for 24th and 25th spot. So the pack of the field, they're just as lively as the guys running at the front. So Lounge continues to lead. Just see Dale Wood now get down the inside of Jack. On board with... Rick Kelly, I say it all the time. If you've got any vertigo issues, it's just a mad look. It just shows the violence and shows how much the driver's head doesn't just move around, but how much the elevation change makes the eye level move and therefore how you need to continue to react. You see the elevation change there where Rick looks. Now he's going to look for the apex of turn five. Then you'll see the curb. So you see the Valalunga curb disturbs the car. Then you'll see the dip. Then you'll see him look back towards the right because there's the apex just up behind where Garth Tander's Commodore is. Pulling gears now, lifts his vision up. Then over the roller coaster. 255 kilometers an hour down into the roller coaster, the hardest braking area in Australia. The road comes back at you. And you can see here, just up a little bit further, pretty lively battle going on with Scott McLaughlin right in behind is Jamie Winkup, right in behind he, David Reynolds, and Fabian Coulthard. Here's a replay. Looking at McLaughlin, this is turn seven, Courtney down the inside. This will set up a crisscross. 
and it does. So McLaughlin then tries to sneak back up the inside. Wind Cup wants in. Down to turn one. And that's why this pack is so tightly bunched. The other problem with being in that pack at the moment, extreme brake temperatures, pretty high brake pressures required around here to stop the cars. High temps up around 800, 850 degrees. When you're in the pack, those numbers soar. That'll be hurting the guys in the midfield at the moment. Take a quick break. We've got a 0.3 margin between Craig Lowndes and Mark Winterbottom. It's all going on in the middle of a pack. Stay with us. This is the Perth 400. And Robert Dahlgren is under attack. The Swede in the Volvo has got Jason Bright through. Russell Ingle nibbling. This has been Dahlgren's best qualifying performance of the year. He started from eighth. He's back to 11. But he's right in the midst of a real rumble here. It's been a tough, tough year for him so far. So much to learn. New championship, new drivers to compete against, new cars, new race tracks. Loving life in Australia, but his life at the racetrack hasn't been too kind to him. Let's see if he can get a result today. Russell Ingle working hard down the inside. He's through here for 11th place. Nice weekend for Lucas Dumbrell Motorsport. Qualified third yesterday for both races in the 10 and on the fringe of the 10 yesterday things going very nicely for this single car team back on board with will davison and he's covering his old teammate garth tander who is trying to slip through miserable weekend for tander on home soil 12th sorry 15th and 11th in the two sprints yesterday his teammate James Courtney runs position four. 83 laps, 200 kilometres is the distance for this one. First time we've gone this far at Barbagallo with the new generation car. Second year for this new platform, the V8 supercars. Behind Tanner is another of his old teammates, Rick Kelly Ingle now. Down the inside of the Volvo. Turn six, move done. And the Swedes just slipping through the field. It's going to be so frustrating for a guy who's been a works Volvo drive for 10 years to see Scott McLaughlin going so well. Great for the team, great for the program, great for Volvo. Look at this, Will Davison. He's in on the scene as well. A little bit of a rough, couple of former European open wheeler races going at it. Who would have thought they'd be driving a Volvo and a Mercedes in V8s in Australia one day? But Will is through, gets a help from Tanda. This is in the mid pack. This is Willing. 10 down, Lowndes leads, four tenths the margin, back to Winterbottom. Rick Kelly trying to put the Nissan by, and he'll get it done. So Dahlgren's under attack from everybody. From lap 11, Perth 400, we're looking there at Russell Ingle. He's in 11th place. He's moved up slightly in his qualifying position. This is the mid-pack battle. Our leader is Craig Lowndes. Mark Winterbottom is second. Unfortunately, folks, I'm going to record a DNF on my name for this particular event with apologies, so I'm going to hand it to Scafe and we've drafted in some co-drivers. We certainly have, Cropo. All the very best. We've had a little plug lead off Bill Coppin's voice today, so sorry about that, folks. It'll all be... Back to normal very soon. Aaron Noonan and Greg Murphy join me. And this is pretty wild, Nerds. Oh, Robert Dahlgren has been a punching bag for the last two or three laps. He's been hit by about four or five guys at turn one, lap on lap on lap. The V8 Supercar Welcoming Committee has been giving the Swede a bit of a tough time in the last couple of laps. While we're in the break, he lost a couple of spots. Russell Ingle got through. This is the run over the hill. And then Will Davison decided he get in and have a move at the Volvo as well. A couple of former European open wheeler drivers here. Who would have thought they'd be driving a Volvo and a Merc in V8 supercars exactly. one they, day down the track? Well, they were real protagonists, weren't they, in Europe? And, uh, and Robert Dahlgren's got a very good pedigree in open wheel racing. You see Garth Tanner down the inside there. You watch, have a look at this big slide. Big slide by Robert there. And then Rick Kelly's alongside. And he got him too. Yes. He sent him back to 18th and he started 8th on the grid. So Slade down the inside now of James Moffat. Jack Perkins right in behind Moffat. Moffat has just been complaining about this car all weekend. When you think about this time last year, you can see Tim Slade's heart rate there, almost 160 beats per minute. But Moffat's performance last year was very strong. He was the car was very good. Yeah, he was the best Nissan here, wasn't he? Remember of the four of them, but he's been P24 in qualifying every time around. 
and frustrated. All we've heard on the radio all weekend is a guy who, you know, when your car's that bad, you just don't want to be here, do you? Exactly. And you know, Craig Murphy, better than most, that when the car's good here, it's fantastic. But when the car's bad, you just know where, aren't you? Oh, it, it's so hard with the services. Robert Dalgren's looking like a bit more of a punching bag, as you mentioned before. I feel for this guy. He has not been able to get his rhythm back going since the attack that started a few laps ago and it's still not over now and Todd Kelly's going to be the next one that takes advantage of this I'm sure of it what's blood nose in Swedish he's been yeah. punched that many times by these blokes and now he's under attack again this is Todd Kelly in the seven Jack Daniels car slipping on through the team at Volvo Polestar Racing watching on as the V8 rookie slips back down the order strong qualifying his best of the year he's starting to come to grips we're on board with Tim Slade. Side by side, he's always a worry. Oh, that's wild. And Caruso gets a little bit of a touch, and that's when the car's so unweighted. He probably deserved that, because he did push Dahlgren a bit wide, didn't give him an upright off the back of and it. That's a bit of frustration creeping on on Dahlgren's part. I mean, he has been... He's gone from that starting position all the way back to 20th. He's going to lose another one here from Tim Slade, too. His best career or for this year in this series, eighth qualifying position and also has been fast through the weekend. There's been times on Friday, he was actually in the top five. He was very, very quick. So he's looked pretty good at this facility, but in terms of race craft, the boys have given him a bit of a boxing here, back to 21st. And this is the spot that I was looking at and referred to in terms of the race craft, the two mirrors almost rubbing against each other. Darwin gets a little bit wide, the cars make a little bit of contact, and then because Michael was basically moving the car straight across, Robert really didn't have anywhere to go. So he, he rested the car against him, and then he just gave him a little shove. This comes up in just in a second. He really didn't have an option there, did no, he? It, he couldn't slow the car down any faster than what he was. You can see the rake and the dive in the front and right then, hand side, and he's just, just a little <laughs> escort. Just a little escort wide. And that's what happens sometimes, and as you said, Greg, when you get a little bit frustrated with that, that's the sort of reaction you have as a consequence. This battle continues with McLaughlin and Wink Up, Lucko. Yeah, just watching Robert Dolgan then lose all those spots, and it's such a hard thing for a race driver. We talk about it a bit, mate, don't we? The art of being overtaken, and by nature, race drivers won't have that happen, but that's a really good example. The nature of Barbagello Raceway, right-hander, 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 means that when one gets through, two get through, three get through. And sometimes what you're smarter doing is letting the first guy go through, tuck him behind him, get back online, keep the rubber off your tyres. I mean, he's just spent three or four laps running out in the rubbish there, which takes the speed out of the car. And as Murph said just then, Spud, you're dead right. Get the momentum going. Get the rhythm back going again. Well, Arco, it's got worse for him because they've shuffled him a few more back. He's 24, his last bar one and he's blowing out in his lap times past one minute, so what am I betting he's fried the tyres off that car too, which has been his drama this year as he comes to grips with a car that's very unique and a tyre size very unique too to this. And his teammate, he looks to be having a few issues as well. That car was so speedy in the first race yesterday. He dominated that race to take Volvo's first win. The second race struggled a little bit more, and it looks like today they haven't quite got on top of the temperature changes, the track changes, and our race winner from yesterday, Scott McLaughlin, is just struggling. He's lost a couple of spots. Courtney's gone ahead of him, and now he's under a lot of pressure from Jamie Whitcup. Great battle at the front still with Lowndes, Winterbottom, and Mostert. guy that I've been impressed with was James Courtney. Courtney's move on McLaughlin was very nice at the final corner. Got that move made, and now has, in fourth position, made ground onto the back of Mostert. A great dive. Very last-minute dive by Winkup. The only thing here is he's got to control the car on the way out. And the crisscross is made. So McLaughlin does the crisscross. The problem is, is all it does is slow both cars up. Exactly. And how long should he give up this fight until he gives up this fight? Because he's just going to burn up these tyres even quicker by doing this. And these guys, look at Reynolds. He can see what's going on. in a touch on the crossover. Wincup, he's got the line. There's a puncture in the background That's for Holdsworth. Lee Holdsworth. Yeah, just heard him on the radio there. He was radioing the crew on the way down the hill. So it came at probably the best place you could have it to get straight into the lane. That locks him in now on his strategy. Gee, he was lucky then. Your point's a really good one, Nunes. If that happened over the back of the track, you've got to do half or two-thirds of a lap. Just listen to the communication here. So lap 17. Go, mate. Go, go, go. Big drink of fuel. Remember that they have a minimum to... 
take over the course of this race. They need to put in 120 okay, litres minimum. But how they do it in what quantities is up to them. Good to go after the Mercedes, Jack. Go, go, but wait, wait. Go, 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 go. Oh, go, 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 go. oh, oh he should have been. Bad, bad call. Bad that is, call. That is a bad you call. You can't say, go, go, wait, go, wait. And he was clear. He, he was, was well clear was. to go the first time. There was no doubt about that. He would have slotted in, so we'll have to see what happens there. But we talked to you, talked earlier, Scafie, about the strategy, Jack Perkins. He's got four sets of tyres, so he's on a different strategy than these other guys, potentially. But that could be a bit of a problem. Big mistake there on a, big, on a bad call by his team. That is a bad call. And when you make those decisions like that, you've got to live by them. There probably was contact. Well, yeah, you just be like careful. Like to see a replay. Like to see a replay. Yeah, but either like... way, when you're the driver, get yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, fries exactly. your brain. Exactly. So this is the battle for the lead. Lounge, Winterbottom, Mostert. They have not been any more than a second apart since the start of this race. I've been very impressed all weekend by FPR's race pace for the last two race meetings. We've seen how strong it is. This is the replay. Go, no, don't go, 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 no go, and bang. Oh, that's so that will be that will be a yep. penalty. That's the end of his strategy. And there was Mark Beretta looking on, because Barrett's face told the story. <laughs> it did, didn't it? Basically went, oh. And and as a consequence with that, Mark Beretta is there. As a consequence, there will be a penalty for that, Barrett's. Scapey, uh, interesting down in pit lane. It's all happening at the moment. Everyone's looking at the sky, trying to work out whether it is going to rain or not. So what do you do if you're a team? How do you prepare? Well, no one prepares better than these guys at Red Bull Racing. They have been playing tyre chess for the last half hour or so. Look at all these tyres that have come in and out, been rearranged. There are worn rotor tyres, there are brand new tyres, there are wet. These are all Jamie's tyres in this group, Craig's down in this group. But uh, these guys have got an option for every condition. Hey, hey Barrett's... Uh, How's Larko's form? Just starting to do weather predictions on the grid. You know, I'm a farmer. I think there might be a bit of a bit of rain later on. Uh, what do you think about that? I, I reckon yeah. you should stay in that little spot there because you'll see the guys make a proper educated choice. Hey, if Larko's tipped rain, we're safe. It's not going to rain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Grab, grab your... Uh, your, uh, <laughs> your bathers out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, go bring your umbrella and hang out the front. Well. So stay with us. This is a fantastic battle looming with the two series contenders, Lowndes and Winterbottom. Pit lane is starting to get a little busy. Bright is in, as is Scott Pye. We're at the end of lap 20. So this is first off for these guys. Jack Perkins under investigation for that unsafe release that we saw before in the Geldwing car. Lowndes, Winterbottom, Mostert, Courtney, Wing Cup fifth. McLaughlin, Reynolds, Coulthard, Ingle, Will Davis. That is your top ten at the moment with 20 of 83 completed. Final race of the weekend. New fastest lap, Jack Perkins, 57.15. Those fresh tyres paying off. But it's a little bit of a false economy. But he's got fresh tyres for the rest of this race. But he doesn't have track position. Safety car. Ooh, this is tight. Holdsworth Ooh. cut off the road by Scott Pye. Now, this was mentioned earlier in the weekend. The driver coming out of the lane, it's their responsibility to merge safely. That didn't seem well, too safe. He's had to make a bit of an evasive manoeuvre there to avoid Scott Pye, who's just come straight across in front of him. So, plenty of action going on. A few interpretation of rules will have to be looked at, unfortunately, for Jack Perkins. Oh, now, this is another Merc, another puncher, another left rear. We saw Holdsworth with one before. The other Erebus car of Will Davison has got the same problem, but he's got it further around the lap. This will absolutely murder his race. He just said, I knew the tyre wasn't right. And this is frustrating. This is slow limping. Get it back nice and safe, please. Hmm, interesting. Two cars from the one team with the same drama within a couple of laps. Hmm, let's see what we can find out about that one. Is it just coincidence or is there something in this? We'll get our guys and girls in the lane to keep an eye on this. Lap 23 at Barbagallo. It's bad news for Will Davison. The Erebus Mercedes has a punctured left rear tie up. Two in a row for Erebus Motorsport. Lee Holdsworth's had one. He's been to the lane. The Castrol Edge kilometre count shows we're 53.2 k's into this. 200 kilometer race and Mark Scott Will Davison's had to do two-thirds of this lap on this punctured Dunlop. His race is dead. It's over and out. 
as a consequence of that, Nunes. And you've got to say that there's a bit of weirdness that teammates can have a left-hand rear puncture within a couple of laps of each other. So something, a little anomaly there, something causing that left-hand rear puncture. Maybe something hanging under the car, maybe too much camber on the left-hand rear. There was a lot of action in that mid-pack when those guys were coming past, and there was some contact there with Davison when he, I think he was passing Dahlgren as well, so maybe it's a coincidence, but we'll find out. Uh, there's a long way to go in this race. If it happens again, you'd be looking, oh, here's the wait, wait, go. Again. Oh, my goodness. Ugh. It's all happening. Wait, wait, go is a very hard one to read when you're sitting behind this, the steering wheel of a V8 supercar. Just coming through. Penalty for Perkins. So all of that advantage that he was trying to play the game with, with the, the soft tyres. Tires, yep. With the, the fresh tyres, I should say. Out the window now. He seriously needs a safety car to bring him back into the fold. And what is surprising is that we haven't seen a safety car all weekend. So one of the front Falcons, one of the front factory FBR cars. <laughs> thought Larko was going to go to the bay then. Get, get service. <laughs> Yeah, more than that, don't you, it was going to be hot. Okay, I can't tell you how much I hope it rains. I hope it pours. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see let's, who's let's, let's, let's coming in. It's no. Chaz. Oh, it's Chaz. Okay, let's have a look at this pit stop we talked about earlier. Watch the movement of the guy. One stroke. Well, that's a bit slow to come off that one. On we go. Nuts straight. Important stopped on the mark. Now, how he used between 40 and 70% throttle to get this car off the line nicely, which is really critical because they're on a speed limiter. The car doesn't have full power. Oh, go, go, so go, go, watch go. this. Very nice. On cold tyre, you just want a little bit of that wheel, wheel spin so you can maintain RPM and get it away nicely. Well done, boys. That's a very nice level of drivability there, Larko. Lots of times the cars are hard to get away like that, aren't they? So when Chaz went to move the car away, that was very good. Now, Lowndes responds to the Mostert stop. So we spoke of this earlier. But when you do have one of the front guys come in, you've also got Courtney. Courtney's responded also. They weren't very far apart. Courtney has come forward in this race. He actually looks like he's got good speed. He has got good speed. We've been watching the gaps between those front four. And Courtney was just making a little inroads on those three that were ahead. Maybe Lowndes, maybe he was holding those those two Falcons up. Just an absolute, uh, just a small amount. New set of tyres, just waiting for the fuel. They look like they're new. Like, can you see whether their green tyres just went on that car? It was actually quite, they, they look shiny, so they look brand new. And there's your gap. So, Lowndes, he got away from Courtney. So there may have been a bit of difference in how much fuel they put on board. It's going to be tight here, though, when Courtney exits. The Falcon is coming around, so we haven't seen the shot right there, but he's got ahead of Courtney. So now we've got to look for when McLaughlin, and we've also got to look for when Winterbottom comes in. Both those guys will be the next to come in. Oh, big stop there by Engel. So just have a look here, Scafie. You're dead right, mate. Uh, I saw a couple of used tyres, but look at Wing Cup's tyres out here. Green down the left side. You can see they're shiny, never been on the car. And over on the other side, if we point over there, Rich, you can see used tyres going down the right-hand side of the car. This is strategy stuff, conserving tyres. Yeah, great, Larko. Thanks for that, because I, I thought I saw a fresh tyre on that car, so that's a split. Okay, There's drama. Done, this yeah. Volvo, McLaughlin, he's yeah, lost yeah. ground in the last few laps. He's, he's got dent in the door. dent in the door, and it's popping open, so they've got to try to keep it closed, because otherwise... The Russell Engel came in ahead of Scott yeah, McLaughlin. McLaughlin had lost a couple of spots on the timing screen. He lost pace in the last few laps, so I reckon that's got something to do with it. Someone's helped. The door's been coming open. So he has been struggling, but we were watching him. Here, Here we go. go. Replay in car with Scott McLaughlin. Watch right. Todd Kelly. And, and, and where did he come from? Well, there's someone else there. So he's having a pro He's got a bit of a problem on board the Volvo. We're ready for you. We're about to. Looking now, he's in. So this will be a very important stop. Let's see what happens with the NPR car when it resumes, because it was the car running right behind Craig Lowndes in second position before the stops. He's racing Lowndes. That is the priority here. Drink of United E85. The fuel flow there. Watch Lowndes. There he is. He's in front. Monster, remember, stopped a couple of laps earlier. He goes through. James Courtney is next on the road. 
He's through. Will Davison, don't worry about him. He's one lap down out of the game. So Winterbottom will rejoin with Clear Road in front and Wink up behind. And the undercut has worked for those other guys in this particular example. But the only thing we don't know is how much fuel they've taken on board. So we'll try to find out for you at, for the next stop how much fuel they've got to take on board. Therefore, how long they'll be stand still, how long they'll stay in pit lane for the remaining 120 litres to go in. So Wink up now, drags himself up onto the back of Winterbottom. They are eighth and ninth in the race. Fabian Coulthard hasn't stopped. So the big winner here was James Courtney and Chaz Mostert, who have moved forward ahead. Mostert's ahead of his uh, Mark Winterbottom, his teammate, and James Courtney has moved ahead a couple of spots too. So some winners and losers in that exchange of pit stops. Look at the sky, boys. She's yes. getting a bit darker. And this is what the weather radar is showing us. That's where we are, where the arrow is. Wanneroo, a little bit of rain around in the area. We don't have too many wet races here, Mark, but when we do, as you well remember, they're pretty Man, wet. They are pretty wild. It's slippery enough without the wet weather. <laughs> this guy leads on the road, though. Fabian Coulthard is the only man not to be in pit lane just yet. He's got a margin out front from Jason Bright. It's all about stops, tyres and fuel. More from Perth in just a sec. So Fabian Coulthard is the leader on the road. Race 16 of the championship, no visits to the lane. He's running a long first stint. So he's going with a different game here. The likes of Craig Lowndes, who pitted some four or five laps ago. And these sorts of races, these Sunday 200 kilometer races, they take their time to play out because of the different in difference in variation of how much fuel is taken on by each team and when they take it on. They must take 120 litres minimum they could do 60-60, they could do 50-70, they could go 70-50, they can play it whichever way that they like. The fuel towers are all monitored by V8 supercars in the lane. This is Tim Slade, super cheap auto Commodore from the Walkinshaw team, 19th. He runs behind Scott McLaughlin. And Coulthard now is in the lane, so pit stop for Brad Jones Racing. His teammate Jason Bright will take over the lead. Now, Bright was in on lap 20. For him to work his way up there, they must have taken on not as much fuel as the real leaders, Lowndes and Mostard and Courtney and the like. Seven, eight, ten, Timed fuel stop. Seven, they measure it in seconds. They know the fuel flow. The Kiwis back in the lane. Drink of United's E85, the bioethanol mix. There's Tander and Ingle. They're ninth and tenth at the moment. And while everyone now has stopped, they've all stopped for kind of different things in terms of fuel amount. Ingle slots on through. Fabian Coulthard, third in the points. Our viewers on Sky Sports in New Zealand following him really closely this year. He is very much a championship contender. He had pace last year. This guy's got the lead at the moment. His teammate, Jason Bright, winner here in 2011. This is the end of lap 31. Jason Bright leads the way, race 16 at the Perth 400 at Barmageddo. All cars have now been to pit lane to have a drink of United E85, throw on some Dunlops and get back out there. But Greg Murphy, Jason Bright, remember the BOC car started ninth on the grid. So you would guess for him to be here, he has taken a little bit less fuel on board at that first stop. He'll have to stop for a bit longer later on. It's an interesting strategy. Everyone's got another stop, obviously. And these guys have rolled the dice a little bit on a different one at BJR to put him up front, give him some clean air. So we'll see how that plays out side oh. by side. McLaughlin and Slade through three and a four, fighting it out. Obviously, there's a bit of an issue there somewhere with McLaughlin's Volvo. Larko. Yes, bud, you did right, mate. I had a bit of a chat to Brad Jones just before the start of the race, and he said sort of sneakily, yeah, we have sort of got sort of four sets of tyres. They can go on the alternate strategies, three stops. And if you do the mathematics on it, potentially it could work for you. But there's plenty of other people that also potentially have uh, that extra set of tyres, the four set, and the way they've done it, because remember, this is a clockwise circuit. All the corners go one way pretty well. So you can put away your right front tyre. 
And if you put away a set of right front tyres over the course of the weekend, you end up with a fourth set of tyres. So if we did get a late safety car here today, I think you're going to see more than a couple of tyre teams come in and put on that fourth set of tyres. Ford fans, if you're a little bit worried about Mark Witterbottom and Chas Mostert just dropping back a couple of places, going a little bit slower these couple of laps after the stop, well, it's because they put two or three more seconds of fuel into the car, so they're a little bit heavier, a little bit slower for now, but that benefit will come back later on. And by the way, Tim Edwards, the boss here at uh, Pepsi Max Racing, his son Harry had a motocross fall off his bike, broke his leg and his wrist yesterday, so Tim's got that on his mind as well as trying to win this race today. So all the very best to Harry, who's recovering in hospital. Yeah, not good at all, Barrett's just in the garage here at Erebus Motorsport. These are the two tyres that have both come off, the Lee Holdsworth and Will Davison cars, both off the left rear. Now, there is a specific marking on the tyres that are both off both of cars. They're not sure whether it's the chicken or the egg scenario. Was that marking there first or was that post the puncture? And that's what's caused it. So both of the cars are looking at, both of the guys looking at each other, scratching their heads. They don't know what to do. Kevin Fitzsimons from Dunlop, he is also scratching his head. Not sure, but tyre pressures is something we always talk about here and whether they were slightly out, who knows. What we do now here is that there's a bit of a scrap here. Tim Slade, Rick Kelly, Scott McLaughlin, Volvo P16. And we will get to the bottom of why that Volvo slipped back. The ding in the door wasn't enough to send it spiralling back. Lark, have you got some more on why McLaughlin is where he is? Yeah, he is, mate. He's having a bit of a battle with the car. He's got what we often call understeer, meaning the car's not pointing as well as he wants it to. He can't point it into the corners. When it was in here, you saw the guys dive under. They adjusted the rear right height of the car. By lifting that up, that'll transfer a little bit of weight to the front of the car, maybe give it a little more point. And although we talk a lot about how much you punish your rear tyre around here, if you've got the car that won't point into the corner, point into that apex that Scafie keeps talking about from in the in-car shots, well, you're gone on the way out. Because if you can't get the car rotated in the middle of the corner and pointing up the road on the way out, well, it's just that much harder on the rear of the tyre as you would pick up the accelerator and you're still turning the car. Very good point, Lyco. Thanks for clarifying that Volvo information for us. But we've also got some real strategy at play here because from our numbers, the guys have taken on a lot different fuel strategy in accordance with this. So as you can see on track, Jason Bright is leading from Craig Lowndes. But in terms of how much fuel they've still got to put on board, Bright come in and put the least amount of fuel of all the front runners. So that's why he's jumped the field and got to the front. So Jason Bright's got 96 litres to put in. Most at 71. Lowndes, 82. James Courtney, 77. And Mark Winterbottom, the least of all the front runners, with 69. So of those top five guys, Winterbottom has the least amount. So we'll just get Larko to check for us, because I think, Larko, when you go along and you look at the fuel conservation and the strategy that's being played out here, the two guys, Winterbottom and Mostert, look best in terms of their next fill. The speed of Lowndes will be interesting. They do, Scafie, and that's a good pickup because you're dead right, Bridey looks worse, but I think that just confirms he's on the three-stop strategy because now he's got two more opportunities to put that fuel requirement in the car as opposed to one. So it might work for him still. Yeah, so very interesting. We're looking really at a tyre race but the fuel and the strategy in terms of how much they've got to put in across the course of the race, 120 litres of the United E85, will play out differently in terms of what the stint lengths are and therefore what the tyre degradation is. And Scafie, I hate to complicate the matter and blow everyone's mathematics out of the water, but when you look at the skies, it's a little bit dark. We haven't even taken into account wet weather tyres being tyres that you go on to at any of those stops. This is good. Look, McLaughlin's struggling. Moffat's down the inside. Oh, oh there's contact. Funny. Tim Slade. Oh. oh, hangs on to it. Rick Kelly gets a free spot. Oh. Steering. Was that McLaughlin? No, that was Slade. Right, mate, uh, Slade that said that. But they hit wheel to wheel. So it was a very violent reaction. And you can see Scott McLaughlin right out sideways. So Slade's radio said just busted yeah. the steering. Here he see is. there? Yeah, yeah. Look at that. How much right lock he's got on, he can't get a he's turn. Done. It wasn't the best move either. He just he drove in there a little bit too hard. He didn't give McLaughlin room to give him room and they made heavy contact. This is not the first time we've seen damage steering on poor old Tim Slade's car. Had some contact with Jason Bright in New Zealand. Here it is again. When they finally make contact, it's off the curb and then yeah. bang, wheel to wheel. 
and a good save. Great car control, Scott McLaughlin. Not good for the tyres. No, no, not good for the tyres, but a great save. Could have very easily been backwards then. So on board now, you can see how off centre the steering is for Tim Slade. So Slade rolls on into the lane. The super cheap auto Commodore is damaged. The steering, it ain't straight. Jason Bright leads the way. 37 laps down in this Perth 400. Race 16. It's an interesting one unfolding in the West. So the super cheap auto team go to work and that's not good news. Here's Lowndes, Mostert and Bright. One, two, three in the race. Lap 39. Jason Bright just seems to be pushing these guys back a bit. This has put Mostert into a very attacking position on Craig Lowndes. And Pepsi Max Falcon looks very strong at the moment. Lowndes hasn't been able to do anything about Jason Bright. We've talked about the strategy involved here. And this will be frustrating, the Triple Eight car just a little bit. Looking in the mirror, James Courtney's next in line, running fourth at the moment. Lowndes unable to get rid of the BOC car on those different strategies. But pace behind Murph is with Courtney, it's with Winterbottom, it's with Winkup. They're a couple of tenths faster a lap than these top three runners. And I think that's probably because of Jason Bright and his yeah. pace at the moment. He's fast enough. In the, in the places that make it difficult for Lowndes. Most it puts it down the inside. He's got it. Absolutely got in the hole. Lowndes will give him room, and he will take this position. That is a critical move in this race. Remember that Mostert stopped lap 24. He stopped a couple of laps before his teammate Mark Winterbottom. Lowndes stopped on lap 25, so pretty comparative in terms of and where the they pitted. And the key here will be how quickly, or if he can, get rid of Bright and then start yeah, pushing a gap. Yep, because absolutely. I think he's got a faster car than Lowndes has got for sure. Let's see if Mostert can make short work of Jason Bright. And you can just see how just that car's coming off cold corner there. Yeah, just here on the radio, the tyre gone on Garth Tander's car. He's 10th at the moment in number two, the Holden Racing Team car. So there's three tyres gone in this race. Two with the Erebus cars, one for HRT. Approaching halfway. Bad news for Super Cheap Auto Racing. Tim Slade's car is in the garage with steering damage after some contact with Scott McLaughlin. The crew are going to work. Garth Tander just heard him on the radio. Left rear tyre gone on the number two HRT Commodore. He was in the top ten. That's three today, boys. Two Erebus Mercedes, one HRT Commodore. Hmm, interesting. Well, we have seen at times when you get the number of cars with that style of failure, then there's a spot on the track Something where it happens. on the track, exactly right. And it could be here, could be where the, the guys are using this curb, potentially. But this is getting racing. This is the pass, the replay of Mostert making the move on Craig Lowndes into Turn 1. A fantastic late-breaking manoeuvre. You look how good that car's coming off the turns. It's looking very strong. We were talking about it yesterday, Greg. We thought on the exit, and this is the change for the lead now. So... They fire over the crisscross. Bright stays there. Lowndes could have dived down there. He knows he's in championship contention, Craig Lowndes. That was smart not to dive down there and make contact with Mostert. And this is frustrating, I think, Mostert right now. He knows he's got a much faster car. Jason Bright holding on. He's pushing these guys back. We can see the HRT car, the number 22 of James Courtney, closing in and managing that, that speed. So Mostert briefly had the lead. When he got down the inside to turn seven, that's the tyre. Tanned up, there's Noel Kelly from Dunlop, Frank Adamson then, category technical manager from V8 Supercars looking on. They're trying to get the tyre back in shape so they can see if there's a defect or something wrong with it. Here goes Mostert again, the last bend. He's got the nose down. Will he let the crisscross happen this time? He's got to hold Jason Bright back from getting through it. Oh. He dives to the pit lane. That's a smart well, move. So this, for Bright, confirms that this will be a three-stopper for him because he put a very small amount of fuel in at the start. He jumped to the front of the field. He's now going to stop again before anybody else. This is his second stop coming out of the lead. Mostert, as we said before, has got 71 litres to put on. Mark Winterbottom, 69. Jason Bright, 96. You can see the fuel flow there on the United fuel flow meter 
That will mean there's about 50 odd leaders still to go for another stop for Jason Bryant. This is all about a safety car. If there's a safety car late, then this will make a big difference. Oh, ugly with his teammate, with Dale Wood. Not much room there. He, gave it, he just gave him enough room, didn't he? There, Jason Bright, so there was no contact. This is on board with Scott McLaughlin, the Volvo, chasing Shane Van Gisbergen, who I just heard on the radio saying, I'm waving to everyone because they're all going past me. You can't do anything about it. He's had a really terrible weekend. No pace, never has had much form here at Barbagallo, but he's going to put up a fight here against his countrymen. And, and did he give him a wave then? I he's think they are. They're having a little looking at him. bit of New Zealand bro stuff. What do you do? Is there an action? He's going to give him a wave, but he ain't going to give him the spot. No, He's no. not going to give him the spot. You know, I'll be courteous, but yeah. I'm not going to let you have it. Oh, I, I like that. Oh, oh, oh Cossie. Cool. 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 Left rear. Left rear gone again. Sure. So both HRT cars, both Erebus Mercedes have had left rear tyre punctures. Courtney was a contender. He's not anymore. Okay. This is a real travesty for James because he was genuinely fast. He had genuine car speed here today. He was a podium contender. Well, he drove, and he drove really well in the early part of this race. It was a great pass on McLaughlin early. He made ground on the leaders. He was fourth before the first stops. Just listen, he'd be talking to Rob Starr. Good day, mate. Look at the smoke inside the cabin. Got to just be very careful when you do this because you can't come back too fast. You just, you want to get back as quick as you can, but if that tyre, which it's doing now, is coming apart the way it is, it can just destroy the back of that car and then there's more work to fix. But his race effectively, depending on what happens in the next 40 odd laps, is pretty much done as well. Now they're going to have to think on their feet because they really need to have two more stops based on this because they're not going to get home on tyres. That's a green set of tyres, they're brand new. So they're shiny, brand new tyres. A lot better than that one. I reckon there might have been an inner guard. Did you see them beating the inner guard then? They were working away inside the wheel well there. So, so whether that had the tyre had dragged that out or there was something on the inner guard that had caused the puncture, we'll have to try to find out for you. So that, as I said, is a travesty for car 22, James Courtney, the factory holding team, and the same thing, looks exactly like his teammates. He just said on the radio, I've been online all race, pretty much. He can't clearly remember a time where he's gone off and bashed a curve, or it's already, it's already cut down. Yeah, he's done there. David Reynolds goes on through, who, by the way, has just been into the oh, lane. Good save. No, Rally cross stuff just to make it home. Here's Mostert, Lowndes, and Courtney. That's where it went into turn one he's had to do a full lap worst place it could happen and that says it all from the crew at the Holden racing team that was a chance for a podium that's gone begging here's McLaughlin 15th just let's refresh Mostert Lowndes winner bottom yeah Sky look at the sky oh, over it's there. getting darker from the last time that I mentioned it Wink up Coulthard they're the top five at the moment well, Jason Bright just ahead there, he's slotted out after that second pit stop in 14th position and obviously got a lot of pace on those new tyres, so he's going to make, oh, another tyre potentially. Front, left front, Ooh. yep. On Shane Van Gisbergen's car. Mm, clear now. Running. Has he got a breakage in there? Because that tyre did rub on the guard. Look at Bright's the speed clearing. of Jason Bright's yeah, car. Just, just got to clear this traffic though. Guys that are slower and want to race. Well, bad news. Well, it was, and it was two positions basically in one corner. So you can see the lap speed then with fresh tyres. McLaughlin now trying to get down the inside of his countrymen. And that was something that started some laps ago that still hasn't been sorted out between these two. And there's not much use doing this stuff. You know, they're wobbling around in 14th and 15th. The thing is bumping and carrying on because at that stage all you do is slow both of you down. He's made ground there bright straight away. He's right up onto the back of Rick Kelly. James Moffat is currently 10th, the highest place Nissan. David Wall and Scott Pye have done a good job in 6th and 7th in the DJR cars. So Mostert, Lounge, you can see there, bright by Rick. On board now with Rick Kelly looking down at this roller coaster ride. 255 kilometres an hour, break the car hard. Get it turned for the final corner. McLaughlin finally gets that move done on Van Gisbergen. That took a long time, has used up a lot of his tyre to make that happen. That car looks a little bit pacier 
than what it did after its first stint. So maybe that adjustment that they made to the rear suspension, changed the ride height, has just helped Scott McLaughlin's speed a little bit. It's Nick Perkat, Heavy Hurley to Australia Commodore with a move on Scotty Pye. They're fighting for eighth and ninth. A couple of old Dunlop Series rivals. Spoke to Nick this morning out the window yesterday. Not hard to be out the window in these new generation cars, but this is a little bit better day for Walkinshaw Racing. But he's really the flag carrier. The two HRT cars have had puncture dramas. Tim Slade has got steering dramas, and Nick's the last man standing at WR. Hey guys, as we said, these tyre failures, I think it's important we get in a little bit closer and have a bit of a look, because there's a little, a little bit of evidence here. On both these tyres, these are these two, off two different cars, you can see this witness mark around here. Look at that, all the way around the tyre. Now that's on the inside third, and I note in this tyre, if we look in here, hard to see, but there's a very similar mark all the way around there. Now that could be a component up inside the car, or it could be, there's some talk about over at turn four, there's a little drop off over there. So what I'll do is go and have a look at some other tyres and see if we can see that same mark on them as well. Yeah, well done, Larko, because there's, there's got to be something in terms of the continual left-hand rear tyre failure that we've seen from two respective teams. And, and whether it's something on the track, whether it's something, whether it's, it's something where they're rubbing, whether it's Greg Murphy just said a second ago, maybe it's, it's actually rubber caught up on the inside there and it just continues to rub away at that area of the tyre. Well, well, Rihanna said too, there was witness marks on the two cars, on the two tyres that came off the Erebus cars as well. So it's, it's like something's gathering, maybe, maybe rubber is clicking because we can see all the, the rubbish on the outside of the circuit. A lot of rubber coming off these Dunlop control tyres. Maybe it's gathering under the guard and just creating a, a friction issue. Our Super Chip Auto V8 viewer vote. Will Chaz Boston win his first race for Ford Performance Racing today? We want to know what you think. Go to the V8 website, go the seven sport app get voting Ford fans get those fingers tapping away he's looking okay at the moment but he's got Craig Lowndes right on his hammer of course Chas has won before for Dick Johnson racing but he's very much in the Pepsi Max crew now he leads the way there's winner bottom he's third FPR and Triple A out in front at Barbagallo I reckon, he can. I reckon he can win yeah I reckon he can do it yeah. he's got a long way to go 33 laps lap 51 at the Perth 400 So it's a war between the teams that have dominated this track since 2008. Ford Performance Racing and Triple Eight Race Engineering now under the Red Bull Racing Australia banner. This is a Nissan family feud. Caruso and Rick Kelly were on board with the 2006 V8 Supercar champion in the 15 car. These Nissans never seem to be too far apart, do they? No. Every race meeting this year, there's been a battle raging between the yellow ones, the black ones, the black ones, the yellow ones, it doesn't really matter, but they always seem to gaggle together at some stage, and uh, there's usually pretty good action going on when they do. At least they're consistent. They like to stay together, hunt in packs. At the moment, they're on the fringe of the 10. Moffat 11th, Caruso 12th, Rick Kelly we're on board with in 13th. His brother Todd's in the lane at the moment, the number seven car having its second stop. Just look at the progression of steering and then the, where they're coming off on the power. You can hear Rick Kelly trying to apply the throttle. He was so smooth turning that car and trying to keep it nice and stable through the centre so that he was able to apply the power at the right time to come off the turn. And you can just, you can hear how subtle they're being on everything. There's the Erebus guys talking obviously about probably the, the problem they had with those tyres and doing a bit of planning. A little bit of a huddle up there. Let's get the crew together before they have to service any more cars. Lee holds it. There he is. He's just behind the leaders. He's a lap down 19th. Will Davison is 24th. But still Chaz Mostert who leads the way. Mostert, Lowndes, Winterbottom, Wing Cup. FPR and Triple Eight going at it. Wing Cup there is next in the queue. A couple of cars behind that have had various dramas and that are out of sequence. Been still positive for Erebus. They've had some speed in qualifying. Things are starting to move forward. It's been a busy start in race 16. Let's have a look at the highlights of how it's unfolded here at Barbagallo. David Reynolds making a stormer straight through the middle in a bottle of Ford. It's been willing. This was for last place. Jack Perkins and Doe Wood side by side on the run over the hill, and then the Dunlop Series champ. 
had a Dunlop locked up so he could read the marking on the side. James Courtney got a move on Scott McLaughlin. Robert Dahlgren started from eighth, didn't stay there long. The V8 welcoming party beat up on the rookie Swede. Michael Caruso side by side, made it through for a second. Then a little bit of a rub, he was off the road. Then a move here, Jamie Winkup making a little bit of ground. The Red Bull Commodore, the reigning champ, threw on the Volvo of yesterday's race winner, Scott McLaughlin. Jack Perkins, pit stop. Not a good re-entry though. Contact with Lee Holdsworth. He earned a pit lane penalty. This has been an issue. Punctured tyres, left rear for Will Davison. Holdsworth had had one as well. It would take James Courtney out of the podium position a little later. Scott McLaughlin in. A little bit of a modification required to the S60. Nothing a bit of tape won't fix. And Jason Bright with a quick first stop for fuel. He moved to the front. Tim Slade tried to get a move. Only succeeded in tapping McLaughlin, damaging his steering and he's now down the tail of the field after some eight laps in the garage with some running repairs. Garth Tanner, left rear went on the number two HRT Commodore. He wasn't the only one, his teammate, James Courtney. Chance of a podium going begging. He has got going again, but he's back in 20th, and that says it all. That's the highlight so far of race 16. We're on lap 55. Lowndes is in from second in the race. Chas Mostert still leads the way. Mark Winterbottom now takes over second. This will be interesting because as Mark Larkham said earlier in the broadcast, uh, earlier in the broadcast, you've got to now have the undercut. So you've got to work out who you're racing. Clearly, it's FPR versus this man. And as a consequence, they're going to have to stop. Fresh tyres. Now remember, Mostert was the first one to stop of the lead group. So he's got the oldest tyres now. So the last three or four laps, Winterbottom and Lowndes have forged up onto the back of Chaz. Prior to that, he was the fastest car. So when we've worked out all our fuel numbers, and we do all our numbers on tyre degradation, there is nothing between those two cars. Six is coming in, Mostert in, which that's a smart move. There is nothing between Winterbottom, Mostert, Lowndes, and, and just to explain, when we say undercut, we mean when one guy pits, he comes out, he's on fresh tyres while you're on worn tyres. He's going faster, you're going slower. You do your stop and think, I was in front of him before, but now I'm not because that little bit of pace. So that's why they cover him off. Come in a lap later and it's done. Well, so the, yes, your point's exactly right, Moons. The only thing is that Lowndes will be one second faster in terms of the lap speed. Yep. Fortunately, Mostert has got two seconds less fuel to put on. So he should go out. So this re-entry will be ultra important. It may actually determine the end of this race. Can't afford a bobble here. Oh, oh. The lane just gets it going. Here comes Lowndes down the pit straight. This is the race. He's, got to get it. he's well clear. Yep, this is the race. But he's got to get up and running here. Lowndes has had a lap to get himself flowing, get himself rolling. Chaz comes out, stands on the throttle. He's in front again. So FPR have covered off. Good. Red Bull Racing Australia. 28 laps to go. What's he made of? He hasn't got there yet. Exactly. It doesn't get any wilder than trying to keep the most successful driver in this oh, category here. Yeah. Left no, front, down in front. And this oh, drama. Oh, I think it might be just smoke from the brakes, yeah. Aaron. The Was car it? sat there for a very long time. Potentially that's just a bit of a smoke. Lots of rubber on the track. The build-up around the outside of the circuit is immense. So they probably picked up a bit of rubber. Everything looks okay on the boat, but it was a very slow stop. And it's cost him some speed. Uh, some, some positions, I should say. Jason Bright was the leader after that first round of pitch stops. They had that strategy. And Lowndes, meanwhile, Murph, is doing the fastest lap of the race because he knows that if he doesn't do the fastest lap, that Winterbottom's going to come out in front of him after this stop. Absolutely. Expect to see Mark Winterbottom come in this lap. So let's just see what happens. I'm looking at Can the he get lane. in? No, he no, doesn't. They're not in the lane, Scaphy. They're not waiting for him. They're pushing on. It's a, it's a long last stint, though, Wink Mark. Up it's in. a very long last stint. Mark Winterbottom's last lap time at 59-1. Craig Lowndes at 56. So he's on another fast one. But maybe they're going to roll the dice, wait a little bit longer, see what the weather does, and also have a stronger car towards the end of the race. And the only thing that will haunt them is a safety car. Correct. So if a safety car comes out at some point in the next couple of laps, you're in plenty of trouble. Jamie Rewink up, meanwhile, has come in from fourth position. Green centre, soft Dunlops, or certainly on the left-hand side, went on that car. Remember Green's brand new, not been run. There's Lowndes. 
Oh, he's made some he's ground. right on him. 56-5-5 that time around. He ripped four tenths from him. Here's Winkup re-emerging with some clear road to play with. Yeah, Chase Mostert, he just needs to control this. He's got good speed. We know he's got good speed. He just needs to conserve everything, use his head, not worry about the speed that Lounge has got. Keep him behind, which I think he's got the car to do it, and frustrate Lounge a, bit, a little bit and control that speed. Fabian Coulthard's in the lane. I, I just think they're mad. I, I, you've got to get Winterbottom in. He'll fall too far behind. He's running 58s, 58.9 last time. Lowndes and Mostert in the 56s. That's massive chunks of time. Two and a half time. seconds. Huge, huge. But what they're banking on is having that good quality rubber for the run home. But if this weather works Will against them... Will they have them, enough time? Well, oh, that's the great thing. So many questions in these longer yeah, races. FPR's ready in the pit lane. They're that's ready for number five. And that's Coulthard in the lane taking a stop. Yeah, so, and it's an interesting concept because you've got to do one or two things, haven't you, mate? You've got to go for the undercut strategy or you've got to stay out there longer and hope your tyres are better at the end. Now, with Winterbottom strategy, I just I think you're right. The difference isn't just going to be there. If you looked at the, the performance of the cars over the weekend, which is what you've got to do. Here he comes down here a bit lane. That's what you've got to do, and there's just not going to be enough difference at the end of the race for him. Oh, I agree, Larko. That's what just needed to happen earlier. He's, been, he's probably had the best tyre life of the field. So you've just got to get him on the same strategy as the other blokes. And on our numbers, he would have come out in front. But now the difference in lap time, uh, laps, since these guys stopped versus him is not enough. So he's not going to get the gain at the end that if he'd been able to stay out a, a lot longer. And we're talking five laps or five or six laps of difference. It's a little bit, but it's not enough really. But we'll wait and see. Takes on that United E85. Yeah, and to re-emphasise the point, boys, I mean, for me, the way Mark's performance was yesterday, he'd be the guy that should have come in first and dragged everyone in with him. And now he's racing Wing Cup, Larko, because this is Jamie coming down the pit straight. Winterbottom will get out in front, but he's further back towards Jamie than he would have been towards the others. So, needs weather change, needs safety car, needs something, otherwise he's a podium runner at best. It looks at the moment that they've reversed the strategy on the wrong guy. Mostert's had the right one. As it looks. Exactly. And how's the pressure on this young man, Murph? This is now probably one of the hardest races that this young bloke is going to well, incur in his him. life. The most successful guy in the category ever, right behind the young rookie for the Factory 4 team. Ah, oh, they're the two teams that have got that rivalry brewing. One's fighting for a championship, the other's trying to make a name for himself. Chas Mostert leads the way. 60 laps down. Jason Bright is out in front at the moment. And here's Winterbottom, under the gun. Jamie Winkup is right on him. Haven't these two had a few fights over the years? Should mention too, you might see flash up in the middle of the screen there as they go through the sponsors. There's also a message to Chris Goose, who's normally the number one mechanic on this car. He's not here this weekend. It's a medal in his eye in the workshop at Triple Eight in Queensland. So there it is, wishing Gooey a full and speedy recovery. Hopefully he's back at the track soon to work on the number one Red Bull Racing Australia Commodore. But Bright leads, Mostert second, Lowndes, Reynolds, Winterbottom, Wing Cup, Coulthard, Courtney, Wall and Percat is the top ten as it runs at the moment. And Reynolds, I mentioned, is fourth, but last pitted 44 laps in, so we'll need to roll on in again, you would think. Jason Bright out in front, he's running to a three-stop strategy, stopped twice. He's 12 seconds down the road from Chaz Mostert, he's a second slower. That time around, Mostert got himself a little bit of margin to just get away a little from Craig Lowndes. 61 laps down, 22 to complete. Just over one hour of racing in race 16. These guys have still got 22 laps to do on the set of tyres. Sid Noons, Jason Bright out front, looking to have another stop there very soon, we would say. And just listening to Team BOC on the radio, they're on the run. When do we do it? When do we do it? How do we do it? Their big focus is on bringing him back out on some clear road, not getting him trapped in behind anybody else. Now he's in. In fact, they're going to make it here. And he's got a 12-second lead at yep. the moment. And obviously that's just going to be de decreasing it's every lap from here on. It's only one way. Exactly right. A big day at Barbagallo Raceway, and if you're James Courtney, Radley Cross isn't what you normally need in V8 supercars. Left rear tyre was gone. This is 
what's going on at the moment. Jason Bright led the race. This is his third stop. Remember, he's on a different strategy from the rest of them. So he rejoins Chas Mostert, retakes the lead, but he will be on fresher rubber for this run home. He comes out where James Courtney is. Courtney's had a puncture today. He sits seventh at the moment. That's critical. That's that good. was absolutely critical that he got ahead of that gaggle of cars, and he's managed to do it. That's great timing. Don't forget to Castrol Townsville 500, our next Super Street event. Tickets on sale at tickettech.com.au. Looking forward to getting back to North Queensland in July, but it's on here. Jason Bright makes it out in front of James Courtney, David Wall, Nick Perkat. That was James Moffat last through. Now, they've rolled the dice. They've gone with their strategy. Let's see how it unfolds. And look at those ugly skies all around the periphery of Barbagallo Raceway. So this is the main straight, basically runs to the west, so in front of Jason Bright, so behind this camera shot, is where the bad weather comes from. We've just shown you the radar a little while ago, but it's dark everywhere. And this is the leader, Chas Mostert, has got a little bit of margin, he's got away from Craig Lowndes in his first little stint since their last pit stop. Viewer vote. Yeah, Will Mostert yeah, win his first car. race for FPR. The Ford yeah, fans are cooking yeah. away. They've got on the V8 Supercar website, the 7 Sport app, 68%. I reckon I'm going left. I'm going yes. I, I reckon saw, he can do it. Boy. I just saw Greg Murphy. Murphy, Murphy was going Mostert, Mostert, Mostert. I just saw it. I was texting home. <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> that car looks very good, though, doesn't it, Scafi? He's managed to get that gap on Craig Lowndes. And it looks like he's doing it very easily. Moment. That car is coming off the corners so straight, so straight, which means he's not getting wheels, but he's not having to, he's able to dial off the steering, straighten the car up, and drive it off nice and straight. That is absolutely critical to looking after these tyres. Good time to get the Castrol Edge kilometre count out to three quarter race distance, and the Castrol back car leads the way. That's down at the Norton Hornets who are watching the telemetry, watching both the car telemetry and the weather telemetry as well to see what is going to blow on on here. Now, this is Nick Perkat, ninth spot. James Courtney's had a puncture today. He's 10th in the HRT car. So Mostert leads from Lowndes. Dave Reynolds, very good job to be in third in front of Winterbottom. We said that that strategy cost them some time with effectively being undercut by Mostert and Lowndes. So Winterbottom further back than he would like. Wing Cup in fifth. Fabian Coulthard, Jason Bright, David Wall, Nick Perkat, and James Moffat on board now with Rick Kelly. Rick Kelly is in 17th. He's battling with his brother Todd just in front. They're up the inside of Jack Perkins leading onto the straight. Jack just moves it across a little bit. Eric Pender just explaining that that car wasn't for position. Just getting it stopped. He had to park it on the inside of the road a little bit. He couldn't use the extremity of the road. He couldn't move it all the way to the left because go, Jack was parked go, there. Go, go, go. This is a great shot because it really shows the small bumps, the road irregularities, the curbs, the amount of driver work, the changes to the steering lock, the amount of slide that the car is on the whole lap. It's a very low grip surface. The tyre quality obviously for this place, using the soft tyre, they go away very quickly. You can see his brother there using every little bit of road and more across the top of the hill at turn five. Then down into this basin, turn six, late apex, nice and gentle on the throttle. All the way up and over the rise. And this is this roller coaster up to six gear at the top of the hill. 255k on a qualifying lap. And that was. A little run around Barbagallo Raceway on board the Nissan Altima with Rick Kelly currently, as I said, in 15th position. So Mostert leads from Winterbottom, Wind Cup and Coulthard. Can Mostert stay in the lead and lead Craig Lyons Town? This is our last break. Stay with us. How long to go? How long to go? Lap 68, Chas Mostert leads the way. FPR, Red Bull, FPR, Red Bull. BJR next in fifth and sixth. David Wall, seventh. Perkat Moffat, Courtney is the 10. We talked about David Reynolds a little earlier. He's been to the lane for his third stop. He's rejoined in 17th place. It's a lot of track position and a lot of ground to make up, even with fresher rubber, 45 seconds off the lead. Here are 
the Kelly boys, the Jack Daniels Nissans, there's the Norton Hornets. The yellow ones are beating the black ones today, Greg. <laughs> but they're all pretty well grouped together. Yeah, they're still only a straight away from one another. Just watching Jason Bright, he's the first of our three stoppers currently running sixth position, which is a great result in itself. He's about nine seconds behind his teammate Fabian Coulthard, so it's a bit of a gap to make up in the next sort of 15 odd laps. Don't know if he's going to be able to do it, he's going to be able to benefit any more from that strategy. Here's Jack Perkins coming to the lane. He was one of our three stop guys as well. Unfortunately, he had that situation in the pit lane, which ruined that strategy completely on a brand new set, green set, Dunlop control, soft tyres, but his day is effectively done with that drive through that he sustained earlier. Yeah, he's still got three stops, but he's had four visits to the lane. The fourth one he didn't stop, he just drove through because of contact with Lee Holdsworth when he was leaving the lane. So he and David Reynolds, who share the pit boom, they're both prepared by FPR under separate racing entitlements contracts of Charlie Schwerkold and Rod Nash. They've both gone for this similar strategy for the run home. So Reynolds in a stronger position because he hasn't had to take a drive through. Russell Engel. Zeroing in here, right on the back of his old Stone Brothers teammate James Courtney in the fight for 11th and 12th. It's been a better weekend from the Lucas Dumbrell team. They've rolled out quite nicely and been stronger in qualifying. And we know the Rusty races really well, and he's again on the fringe of the top 10. It's been a good weekend for Russell Ingle, the 2005 V8 Supercar Champion, the Repair Management Australia Commodore, qualified well this weekend. He always races pretty good, and he's attacking his old teammate, James Courtney, good down move. the inside, and that's for 11. That was a really good move. He set that up, he braked it well, he made sure he got it stopped, and he, because he got a little bit of guns on the tyre there when he was down the inside, he just did a little bit of weave there to get all those remnants of tyre debris off the off the warp tyres, which is very important when you get to the braking area at the next corner. There's Joe Sasso, the engineer for Russell Ingle. Joe's been with the whole racing team for a long time, a very experienced young man. And Courtney obviously had that problem with the, the blowing tyre earlier, so he's, he's out of his strategy that he was trying to play. He's not very fast at the moment. I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised we see him come to the lane again for another set of tyres. Then he was forced to pit with that puncture much earlier on. James Moffat here, Norton Hornets. Let's give him a bit of a pump up because he hasn't had much to talk about this weekend. He's been 24th on the grid three times in a row. But from there for this race, he's pushed himself right up into the 10. He's ninth and he's nibbling away at Nick Perkett and he's ripping a bit of margin away too. Absolutely man of the match so far, hasn't he? That's a great drive from the last row of the grid to get to ninth position and be putting pressure on Perkett. In fact, he looks like he's got better speed than Nick in eighth. He's a great drive, Lucko. Yeah, guys, just trying to get uh, to the bottom of those blown tyres, that whole drama, and, and thinking about it a little bit more, I'd suggest we know the guys are, we know they're running very low pressures. We've had a lot of cloud cover here, not much sun, not much track temperature, so I'm just starting to think if it's the old low pressure thing happening again. Second point is, uh, well done to Jason Bright. I think a good strategy by doing that, because mathematically, if you worked it out at the start of the day, it could work. And it also hung him out there to the latest guy on the track, literally, to put tyres on, which meant if it had have rained, he would have been OK. And 10 laps out, I'm going to revise my rain prediction. I reckon we're going to be, I'll be clear to the end. Thanks very much, weatherman Larko. Now, I just want to go back onto the point Michael Caruso and James Moffat. The two Norton guys started 23rd and 24th on the grid. Both times they did a pit stop, they replicated the Todd Kelly strategy yesterday. Green tyres on the left-hand side of the car, used tyres on the right-hand side of the car. They're currently sitting ninth and 10th position. Pretty, uh, that strategy has paid off very well for Nissan this weekend. Chaz Most at race leader here, Rihanna, is right in and among oh. guys who are having their own oh. fight. Van Gisbergen 20th, oh. Tanda 21st, Wood 19th. It's the last place he wants to be because Lowndes will get a bit of free kick stuff here because he's managed to clear two. He's got to clear one more. Well, when you're the leader, Nerd, it's always worse. You actually get to those guys. They're not ready for you yet. So when you're coming up to pass those guys, and that was pretty willing at the end of the main straight there under brakes there with Van Gisbergen and you can see now Dale Wood is the next car to get by. Mossler will be very keen to put a move on him. Now what he needs to do is get a nice clean run. Greg and I were just saying a second ago as Paul Morris looking on with Chaz's dad. 
They're very keen to make sure the young black gets home in front of that. This, this should have changed by now. Yeah. Wood should have been out of the way. That's, yeah. that's a full oh, lap behind Dale Wood. He's just Blue jumped flags. on the radio, Chaz. He's oh. just jumped Still on the radio. making it hard. Don't turn him. He's all right. He's Blue through. flag now. That now. Is, that's not good. Mostert's got through them all. Lowndes has got by Tanda. He now has to deal with them. So Mostert dumped four tenths last lap, three tenths that lap. Net time drop of seven tenths. But... He might get some of that back because Craig has to deal with it now. But again, what happens when you have a guy who's second in the train, they're more used to who's coming up. They're more familiar with what they've got to do. They understand they've got to move out of the way. So when you're the leader, you often lose more time as a consequence of being the first one, being the pioneer in that particular brigade. There's Tim Slade moving off to the side. Well done. Very respectful of the lead guys. You can see Craig Lowndes trying to do a little under and over trick on Shane Van Gisbergen, a little bit too far back. Van Gisbergen up behind Dale Wood. So they're actually battling for 19th and 20th position, but they're being lapped. Lowndes, he doesn't have the pace at the moment of the leading full performance racing car of Chaz Mostert. Mostert doing a super job, 10 laps to run. And he looks pretty, pretty under control to me, Scafie. I want to get the viewer vote up because seriously, I think this young man. Really? I, 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 was, I just I reckon he's you just driving it so well. He's driving it really straight. Oh, he is. And he's got a really nice flow going. And at the moment, almost 70% are saying, can he get his first win? And it's, I think, don't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saying yes. Sort of... Clearly, 30% of Holden fans are voting today, though, aren't they? <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah, oh, and, and well, frankly, no surprise. I mean, we know this kid's good and. Uh, just rewind, you remember the crash he had at Bathurst? And I reckon that seemed to knock his confidence around a lot, maybe more than it needed to. And uh, he's just taken a little bit of time to get back on his game, and he's well and truly back on, on it. The last couple of races have been very good, and the thing I like about him most, very much like Scotty McLaughlin, he doesn't care less the name of the driver of any car in or around him. Lowndes, Wing Cup or anyone different, they're all just cars. The guy he's racing, he gets his head down and gets on with it. Very natural guy, and I think if he continues to apply himself to his craft, he's going to be around for a long time to come. I agree, Larko. That's a, a really good way of summarising the status of young Chaz Mostert at the moment. And as a factory driver for Ford Motor Company, you can't afford to be overawed by other stars of this game. And for Lowndes to have come out right behind him, Greg, and to have responded like he's responded, it's a very professional effort. Well, it was 12 months ago that he debuted here in Perth, and I think he showed immediately with the results when he was driving for Dick Johnson Racing. Obviously, the skill that he had, but also that he was unaffected by driving with those guys that have just got so much history. This is going to be his first win, potentially, hopefully, within the next few laps, and he's racing against guys like Craig Lowndes, who's won 90-odd races. Guys, just with Eddie Mostert uh, here at the back of the FPR Pepsi Max Racing Crew Garage. Eddie, I know it's not over yet. We don't want to jinx it, but uh, this is pretty exciting so far. Yeah, I think the hard palpitations are telling me the same, Mark. No, it's, it, look, it's, uh, it's, it, it'll be a dream come true, and I know it's too early, but, um, boy, oh, boy, you know, we were looking for nine points today to get uh, to ninth in the championship. Um, I think we may just, with a little bit of luck, we may just make that, so that'll be lovely. And um, yeah, very proud. Very and, proud. And he's worked so hard. He's been knocking on the door th this season. He's had some great results, but this would be something pretty good to get this breakthrough win. I think I think from New Zealand, things have turned around a bit. The beginning of the year was um, was pretty tough. I think he was starting to sort of doubt himself a little bit there. But since New Zealand, things are, things are coming around nicely. And, and it's, it's put another stride in his step now. He's, he's sort of got a bit of confidence back, Mark. Good stuff. Yeah, thank you. Well, listen, no, you take it easy here for a minute. Can I get you a drink or anything? Have you got any Valium? I'll get some. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, a great point that Murph made before about the time that he spent with this team. He was off Broadway. He was signed to yes. SPR. He was loaned out to Dick Johnson Racing, who, by the way, are having a good day. This is David Wall in the famous 17. He's P7. He's doing a really nice job in this brand spanking new car. It didn't roll a wheel at a racetrack before they brought it here. They didn't have the time. They ran it on the rolling dyno road back at Dick Johnson Racing. But for Chazzy Mostert, off Broadway, had a bit of learning, had a bit of drama, had a bit of tough time started this year, but he's been brought up all the right way and FPR have been bringing this guy along for a couple of years for this exact reason. And for FPR to park him in the DJR camp with Dick Johnson, Dick's got a wealth of experience, he's very good with young guys. And for that to have evolved, Chaz, to that point, also Adam Debore, you've got to give him a wrap. Very much so. I've Adam, with Adam, he's a yeah, great Adam, engineer. He was with us for Bathurst that yep. year, and 
Adam's a very good young guy. He's been really good with Chaz. So he's come out of DJR and they put him in to the factory Ford team to remain as Chaz Mostert's engineer. You can hear him on the radio. Every little bit of chat is coaxing Chaz Mostert to get to the end of this race. He's done a very, very good job with him, with Greg. Adam's really solid, great engineer, very smart. Uh, does everything so well and puts everything in place as it needs to be. Very logical guy and they get on really, it's a relationship. We know about the relationship you need with your engineer. You've got to have that communication when you're driving the car and Adam does a great job of that. And this is the guy that's replaced Chaz at Wilson Security Racing this year. It's Scott Pye, formerly with Lucas Dumbrell's team. He was under Roland Dane, who looked after him in his time racing overseas. He's in 12th at the moment. This is a fight for 8th and 9th, Percat and Moffat. So we saw Caruso, I should say. Moffat get by, yeah, so it looked the same, because that's Caruso now attacking Ooh. Nick Perkett. That's pretty willing. It'll get willing here if you side by side. Yeah. Oh, oh, that was very close. James Moffat, great job to get to eighth. So give me the top ten. Moffat, Lowndes, Winterbottom, Winker, Coulthard, Bright, David Wall, Moffat, Perkett, Caruso. That's your top ten. So Dave Reynolds has fallen back out. He was third to try to find out what happened to Dave's car as a consequence of the last stop. You see these guys just nursing these cars home. It's starting to get trickier. Managing the wheel spin, trying to carry the corner speed, not lock up a brake, not make a mistake and go as fast as you can. Caruso looking a little bit pacier than Perkett. He's doing everything he possibly can to hit every single apex and not make that mistake to drop another spot. Jason Bright, first of our three stoppers today, doing an awesome job in sixth position. It's a couple of seconds behind his teammate, Fabian Coulthard. Check this out. Check this out. This is at turn four. The cars are doing 190 kilometres an hour, flat out in fourth gear. They're over, it's up and over the curb, it's sideways, it's used all the suspension travel. You can see the blue smoke come off the car as the car comes down on the tyre. And it's out on the slide, beautiful car control. One of the best spots to watch cars anywhere in Australia. This is the spot right here, just there. We're on board now with Mark Winterbottom on lap 81 of 83. Mark Winterbottom, currently our series leader currently with a 101 point lead over Craig Lowndes, Fabian Coulthard 140 and Wink Up jumped up 213 points adrift of Mark Winterbottom. I don't think they've necessarily in terms of strategy served Mark Winterbottom very well today. No, we spoke about that earlier, I agree with you. Molster's strategy clearly was going, but saying that also, I think he's had a little bit of, little bit of pace on his teammate today and he's just used that Absolutely to the best advantage he can. He's driven superb. Yeah, good point. I, I think Mostert's speed's actually been the best. I think it has, yeah. uh, and they've, they've played it so well. Made that decision, Nick Perkett there. Look for the crisscross here. Under Kirk. pressure from yeah. Reynolds. Look for this crisscross. He's going to try and duck back up the inside. He's just going to give him a touch. Does it. And slides across the back of the HHA Commodore. Puts his car where it needs to be up the inside. Perkett. They're using all the road. He'll look to have a try and get a crisscross here, but I don't think he's got the grip. He can't get the car turned. Reynolds just has that little bit more ability to get on the throttle, use a little bit more power, and get that little bit of drive needed just to get the advantage, and he does it nicely. So Garth Tander, horrific weekend for Garth. Local West Australian man who's re-signed with Holden Racing Team. He's down at 22nd. Dahlgren, who qualified so well, he's at 21st. We're on the final lap now with young Chaz Mostert. Just don't make a mistake. Take some deep breaths. And there's nothing, boys, Cruise for the lap time. Yeah, I think he's going to be loving this one. I think he'll be really enjoying this last lap. He's Eddie. driven 82 laps of near perfection. Eddie Mostert up off the chair. Let's get out to that pit wall. Exactly. young fella's on his way home. Well, he was holding back on it. Yeah, he was, he said, I don't want to go there too early. <laughs> I don't want to put the mocker on him. You don't want to jump the gun. He stepped it up, Chaz Mostert. He was the Formula Ford champ a few years ago. He's gone through the categories. He was a race winner in the Dunlop series. He was signed by Ford Performance Racing. They replaced Will Davison with this kid in the number six car. He had some dramas in the first couple of events, but it came together at Pukekohe. Couple of podiums. 
Wow, Alan Moffat, Dick Johnson, John Bow, famous board names that have won at Barbagallo. Add Chaz Mostert to the list. Our 10th winner in 16 races. And Chaz Mostert wins for the first time for Ford Performance Racing, the second of his career. And he's beaten Lounge, Winterbottom, Wing Cup, all the big names. Ooh, that builds the confidence. We've got another race winner. What a year. It's been an incredible year, but that's an incredible drive. That's a life-changing drive. When you beat your teammate, when you beat Absolutely. Mark Winterbottom. Mark Winterbottom we're talking about here, who's, who's got a lot of confidence at the moment himself. And also, you know, we've got to give credit to this team, to what they've done to turn around and, and also bring up their rookie and have him performing at this level as well. That's a huge challenge. It's drift o'clock now. Chaz is going to burn those Dunlops up. This is the guy that has said, I'm the number two. I'm here to learn. Tell you what, he's number one today, and they're going to have another guy who's con going to contend and take some points away. This pushes him up into the top ten of the championship. Frosty retains his lead, but it's on. But, but not only that, if, to put it in perspective, not only has he beaten his teammate, as, as you said, Murph, who's been operating a really high level, the team's operating at a great level. Last three race meetings, they've been the pick of the crop. But to beat Craig Lowndes, they come out of the pits, line astern. Within the first lap, they were nose to tail. He's moved away. He's beaten him by 2.1 seconds. His kids One have the... no respect, mate. They've got uh, no respect for the old guys. What's <laughs> that? Look Tony at this Winter. McLaughlin bloke. Yeah. What does he think he's doing? No respect at all. It's fantastic. What a great drive. That, as I said, that's a life changer, nerds. And he was part of the super class of the Dunlop Series 2012. McLaughlin, Mostert, Percat, Pie. Listen They're all crowd. here now. And the Ford fans will love this. There's so many of them here in Western Australia. I wonder what he's going to do when he gets out of this thing. Has he thought about the victory celebration yet? There will be Ford fans rejoicing all around this country, and they should be, because the factory team is operating at the highest level. And this young man is one of the faces that will be the future of V8 supercars in this country. We saw Scott McLaughlin do it yesterday for the first time in 28 years for Volvo. And this time now, the first win for the factory team for Ford to beat Craig Lowndes. There's Adam DeVore reckon, in the background. Check reckon, this out for Cuddle. But I also reckon that one of the first guys to come up and congratulate this guy will be Craig Lowndes. I, I agree. And, and they're the sorts of races, Greg, that you have the most respect. Look at that. The great reaction. Mark Winterbottom over in the background. Tim Edwards and all the team there. Can't really kiss you at the moment. I've still got my helmet on. <laughs> Just as well. Great effort. There's Adam DeVore with the red hair on the left-hand side. There's Tim Edwards. Tooley there, giving him a cuddle. Big slide. It's the way to win, isn't it? Burn some Dunlops, beat 24 other guys and bank 150 points. Chaz Mostert, he's the man in Perth today. Ten different winners, boys. That's amazing from 16 so far. Another new race winner. We had Scott McLaughlin and Craig Lowndes claim the wins yesterday. So three different winners for the weekend. Three different manufacturers as well. A win for Volvo, for Holden and for Ford. Craig Lowndes in there to congratulate. He knows that he's had a good day, but hey, Barretts, this guy, he's done it. Hey, Chaz Mostert, congratulations. Welcome to the V8 Supercar Winner's Circle. Well done. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, coming off Queensland Raceway last year and to get another win, I'm just so lucky. A big thanks to Pepsi, Pepsi Max crew and all everyone at FPR is uh, awesome. First and third, it's a uh, yeah, dream come true this weekend. It's uh, fantastic. Start of the year, you launch into the factory forward team. It's exciting time. You say you're here to learn. Did you expect the first win to come this quickly? Uh, not really after the struggle we started at the start of the year. Um, the last couple of tracks have really suited us. And, uh, yeah, I thought Frosty was going to be, you know, the man to beat in that one with his tyre life and, and his strategy. But, uh, yeah, we held on to our tyres at the end and then got the win. It's fantastic. Now, your dad was saying earlier on that the aim this weekend was to get championship points. The good news is you have done that. You are up to eighth in the championship. Good stuff. Yeah, it's fantastic. Coming in 15th this weekend and come out eighth. It's uh, have another couple of good weekends like this. Hopefully get in the top five. We wish you many more wins, Chaz. Well done. Thank you. Congratulations. Craig Lowndes, great to see you back up here again. Uh, you got to hand it to the young fellow. That was a great drive. You put the pressure on him. Oh, look, we did. I think both these guys did a fantastic job. You know, at the start of the race, we I think the three of us were just pacing, moving away from the field. But through the stops, I think those guys uh, filled up more at the beginning, obviously had less at the end. And, uh, and of course, uh, you know, Chaz drove a very straight. We tried to put pressure on him uh, right at sort of the beginning of that last in. But, of course, then we were more worried about using up the tyres. So we backed off. Um, I think he might have just managed the gap or whatever it was. But, uh, look, great congratulations to Chaz and everyone at FPR. But uh, to our guys, um, look, it's fantastic. You know, we got the best out of the car. The Red Bull Commodore was uh, as best we could do. 
You've got to give yourselves a big tick for this weekend. You come away holding on to second in the championship. The gap is 101 points. Oh, look, we closed it down slightly, but we, you know, if we're going to be like this all year, it's going to be a long year. But uh, uh, look, you know, as I said, we did the best. We've turned things around. Uh, I think Jamie was up there right at the end. So uh, for us and, uh, you know, the team, um, it, it's a great kickstart to, uh, you know, hopefully we can move on now to Darwin and Townsville. But uh, hello to Levi and Chile back there. It's a, it's a great way to finish the weekend. Well done, Leonsie. Congratulations. Boy, Mark Winterbottom, well done to you too. You hold on to the championship lead. Look, it was a hard, tough race. Strategies played a lot, but at the end of the day, you go away with the championship lead once again in a good little gap. Yeah, it was uh, that was a really cool race. You um, you have two very competitive cars in our team, so uh, we, we split the odds a little bit. One was going to work, one wasn't, but um, awesome for Chaz. Awesome to see him win. He's a, he's a ripper young guy, and uh, uh, he needed that for his confidence, but... Um, pretty scary to see what he's going to do for the rest of the year but awesome for the team uh, two cars on the podium championship lead five weeks off uh, it's all looking pretty good and bring on Darwin we know you like that place yeah Darwin's very good I thought this might be a little bit dangerous um, I thought Darwin would be good Townsville should be good so uh, well let's hope let's hope it is but um, yeah really good day and We'll, we'll, we'll enjoy this moment. It's, uh, it's, it's incredible to get a win, but two cars on the podium is awesome. Great result, Frosty. Well done. Thank you, Tar. David Wall, another happy camper, mate. Uh, for the uh, Wilson Security Falcon for Dick Johnson Racing. Position seven. Shouldn't be underscored, mate. That's a tough day out there. Tough strategy, tough circuit. Great result. Well done. Yeah, look, absolutely. It's great for uh, everyone at DJR and Wilson Security to... Uh have a brand new car come here with uh, with no laps turned on it, and uh, it hasn't missed a beat. You know, it's just us, been us getting on top of it, me doing a good job, and uh, it's finally come together a bit more today. Apart from my start, I felt like I started in reverse today, but uh, yeah, we had good tyre life and uh, everything went well. We lost the gear cut in that last stint, which was a little unfortunate from the time we left the pits, but uh, yeah, great job by everyone. Well done, David. Congratulations. Thank you. Hello to everyone at home. Thanks. It's had a good weekend, seventh in that brand new car. Most at Louds, winner bottom on the podium. Wink up stays in the fight. Brad Jones Racing, five and six. Two Nissans in the ten. Wouldn't have thought that yesterday because they were struggling. Nice comeback from Moffat and Caruso. Nick Perkat just outside the 11. Tough day for James Courtney. He salvages 15th. Not the day for Scott McLaughlin. The Volvo back in P17. His teammate Robert Dahlgren, 21st. Tales of Woe for Tanda Perkins-Davison. And Tim Slade, some steering dramas. Eight laps down in 25th. Let's head to the podium. Spray some champagne with Mark Beretta. 16th race of the year at the Perth 400. Would you please congratulate our winner from Ford Pepsi Max crew, Chaz Mostert. In second place for Red Bull Racing Australia, Craig Lowndes. And in third place for Ford Pepsi Max crew, Mark Winterbottom. Representing the winning team, Ford Pepsi Max crew, is Adam DeBore. Making the presentation of the third place trophy is the Honourable Mark Lewis MLC, Member for Mining and Pastoral Care. Presenting the second place trophy is the Honourable Liz Bijat, MLC, Member for the Northern Metropolitan Region. Presenting to the winning team is John Clark, General Manager, Barbagallo Raceway. Presenting the first place trophy is the Honourable Terry Waldron, MLA, Minister for Sport and Recreation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 2014 Perth 400 race 16 winners. So Chas Mostert moves his way up the sheets in the Drivers' Championship. Red Bull Racing Australia continue to lead the team's championship, but it's Frosty that leads overall. 101 in the Drivers' title. Back to Craig Lowndes. Fabian Coulthard in third. Jamie Wink up fourth, but starting to just slip a little bit. Courtney back to fifth. Van Gisbergen next from Scott McLaughlin. Chas Mostert is eighth. That's a big step up. David Reynolds is in the 10. Jason Bright rounds out the top 10 at the completion of the Perth 400. So, let's have a look at how we did it, boys. The highlights of race 16. Lowndes on pole alongside Mark Winterbottom. Reynolds got a move. Tell you what, that was a great start. But really, in the early stages, last place was more importantly fought over than first place there for a while. Yeah, there was a bit of wildness going on. And this is Dale Wood with the wheels locked, doing a bit of rally cross action down the inside. But a good move there by James Courtney. He showed really good pace early. Poor old Robert Dahlgren. He was an absolute punching bag for four or five guys in a row who just made moves on him at turn one, turn three, turn four. And this was also a good move. Down the inside, Jamie Winkup on McLaughlin. McLaughlin struggled for pace today. 
Jack Perkins, who was on a four-stop strategy. Bad rejoin here. Bang! Contact with Holdsworth in the pit lane. And then left-hand rear tyre dramas for both the Mercedes E63s and both the Holden Racing Team Commodores. Pit stops played a big strategy here and a big contact there with Tim Slade. Wheel to wheel with McLaughlin. Good save by McLaughlin, but a large amount of damage to the steering geometry of the super cheap auto Commodore. There's Garth Tander with a left-hand rear tyre damage. And there's his teammate right out sideways. And that's the reaction from the HRT guys. This young man, Mostert, struggled all day. That's Adam Debore alongside Rusty French and Tim Edwards from FPR. A lot of strategy. Grant McPherson, who looking on, Dad Eddie, but his son with a breakthrough victory today for the Ford factory team to hold off Craig Lowndes. An extraordinary drive, Moons. Yeah, lots of blue on the podium, Scafie. Ford fans should be thrilled with that.